Hello there, Kravaka here, and welcome to the second lesson in my basic flight instruction series. This series is designed to not be a technical description. Instead, it is meant to teach you in simple terms what to do and not to do without getting into the science of why. Knowing the why of things does make a pilot better, but you have to start somewhere. Last time I spoke about good airplane control. Now I want to talk about poor control specifically stalls, spins, and how to recover from them. I did not make this lesson specific to any one airplane model. Instead, it covers the concepts applicable to all airplanes. For anyone new to flying airplanes, understanding stalls and knowing how to recover is an absolute must. For anybody who has been simming for a while, if you have never had any real primary instruction in the fundamentals of flying, this will likely give you better insight into loss of control and very likely will help make you an even better pilot. So, let's talk about stalls. A stall is when one or both of the wings stop producing lift. Most people equate the cause of stalls to flying too slow. And it is true that's one way to stall, but it's not the only way. In fact, it would be more accurate to say an airplane stalls when you pull back on the stick too much. However, the amount of pull that will cause a stall changes with airspeed and weight. Yes, there is a point so slow you just can't hold the sun bitch up anymore, and you get a stall. What I want to emphasize though, it is possible to stall at any airspeed. So how do we know we are about to stall, and what does a stall look and feel like? Well often, just prior to a stall occurring, there is what's called a buffet. This is essentially a vibration felt through the airframe and often in the control stick. Unless you have a force feedback stick or some cool stuff that shakes your simulator chair, this can really only be observed in a sim by the cockpit shaking. This is an early warning that you are at the edge of a stall. In some airplanes, this is accompanied by a stall warning horn, indicating an impending or occurring stall. Now once a plane actually stalls, things get worse. Often the nose forcefully plummets itself towards the ground, and even if it doesn't, the plane is likely losing altitude. What's worse is while stalled, you have limited control of the airplane, and making the wrong control inputs can aggravate the stall. This is how spins occur, but I will talk more on those in a bit. The good news is a simple stall is easily corrected. As I said before, you could think of a stall as the result of pulling back on the stick too much. So the inverse is often the solution, pushing the stick forwards or frequently just relaxing some or all of the back pressure you're holding is usually enough to end the stall and get you flying normal again. Let's look at this in two common stall scenarios. First is the traditional slow speed induced stall. Pilots find themselves in this situation usually as a result of getting too slow while setting up for landing or climbing at too steep of an angle. Approaching the stall, as airspeed decreases, you might notice the controls will become increasingly sluggish or mushy. Just prior to the plane stalling is where the onset of the buffets occur, which gets stronger until the break of the stall itself. Recovery is achieved by lowering the nose and increasing power, both for the goal of getting more airspeed. As airspeed increases safely above stall speed, you can resume climbing or level flight. Just keep the airspeed safely above the stalling speed as you do, and make sure not to pull back so hard that you induce a secondary stall. As long as recovery is initiated quickly, the stall ends almost immediately and with minimal loss of altitude. Now, I did use the phrase stall speed, and if you recall earlier, I said that it is possible to stall at any airspeed. That's still true. What I want you to understand is that airplanes do have published stall speeds, and it is handy to know what they are. The tricky part is that they change with weight, and so kinda hard to memorize for a military jet that can have a weight change of tens of thousands of pounds in a given flight. Stall speeds also change dramatically while turning or when in accelerated flight. Accelerated flight, in very simple terms, is when you are pulling back on the stick, whether that be pulling up 
or pulling in a steep bank turn. You are very likely to encounter accelerated stalls in a military plane performing hard maneuvers. This is where new sim pilots get into trouble frequently. With accelerated stalls, you still get the buffet as a warning sign. Frequently though, we pull so hard, we go right past the buffets and into the stall. The recovery process is the same, just relax the back pressure on the stick. Once the stall is ended, pull back again, but just make sure not to pull so hard as to induce the stall again. In combat, you need to understand that stalling in a turn, even if quickly recovered, is highly inefficient. It makes you very vulnerable to the folks trying to kill you. When pulling extreme maneuvers, do your best to pull near the point of buffeting, but not beyond. Otherwise, you could quickly find yourself in a spin. Spins are much more serious than stalls, as they are not as easily fixed. Some airplanes need several thousand feet to recover from a developed spin. Some airplanes cannot recover from them at all. This is why spins must be prevented or recovered at the first indications before they fully develop. A spin is an aggravated stall, meaning that at the onset of a stall or during a stall, the wrong control inputs will cause a spin, specifically by causing rotation. This happens either with improper use of the rudder or more commonly by using aileron. If you try to use aileron while the airplane is stalling or about to stall, the result is usually auto rotation leading into a spin. So here is a common and potentially lethal scenario. It is common while at the edge of a stall for the plane to roll a bit on its own. When this happens, it is the natural reaction to move the stick opposite of that roll in order to correct the undesired bank. But this is a bad idea. Instead of the plane rolling the way you command, what tends to happen is a snap roll in the direction opposite of your inputs. If not corrected quickly, this leads to auto rotation and a spin. Not every plane exhibits this particular spin tendency, but the moral of the story should be applied to all airplanes. When stalled or close to stalling, never use aileron, meaning don't move the stick left or right at all. Any unwanted roll caused by a stall should only be fixed after first ending the stall. So relax the back pressure or push the stick forward to get away from the stall. Then you can control the plane normally again. Once more for emphasis, never try to roll when near a stall, just fix the stall. If by chance though, you find yourself in a spin, here's how you recover. First, pull the power to idle. There is one exception to this rule, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Ailerons must be kept neutral throughout the entire recovery, so no left or right on the stick at all. Rudder full and opposite to the direction of the spin, and hold it until the rotation stops. Put some forward elevator or forward stick pressure in. A spin is, after all, a stall, and so this step is to end the stall. Once the stall is ended, usually the rotation will stop with it as well as you regain control of the airplane. Frequently, this leaves you pointed towards the ground. If the throttle is not already idle at this point, idle it. As you recover, be careful as to not yank the stick back so much that you stall again, or you might make things worse. Now the exception I mentioned. If you are in a twin engine airplane, and you have controls that let you operate each throttle independently, like a split throttle, then idle the engine on the outside of the spin and go full power on the engine that's in the direction you're spinning to help stop the rotation. This is usually not necessary, but asymmetrical thrust might be required on some planes once they get into a very deep spin. Just remember, if you do this, once the rotation stops, you must idle both engines or you could easily start rotating the other way. Alright, so here's some stuff you can practice. Go into a free flight and do some slow flight. That is, to slow the plane down gradually until you are near a stall and keep it at that speed. Aim for about 10 to 20 knots above stalling speed. Keep the same altitude the whole time you set up 
and the whole time you're in slow flight. While slow, practice some gentle turns, again, while keeping altitude. Just be comfortable with controlling the airplane well at slow speed. Recognize the feel of the plane nearing a stall. After you get the hang of it, try flying with the buffets and keep control. Do this exercise both clean, that is with gear and flaps up, and dirty where gear and flaps are down. Practice stall recovery. Go up to altitude at least 5,000 feet above ground and bring the plane to the brink of a stall and recover. Bring it into a stall and recover. Hold it in a stall for a moment and recover. Stall it while in a turn and recover. Stall while clean and dirty. The idea is that stalls can happen when you least expect it. You want your recovery response to be quick and automatic in any situation. Also, this helps you understand the stall characteristics of your particular airplane. Practice accelerated stalls and recoveries. Just bank very sharply and pull the stick smoothly back all or most of the way. This is usually enough to cause a stall. Try turning while you are pulling back just shy of stalling and keeping it just short of the stall throughout the turn. Try turning hard where you are pulling back just shy of stalling and keep it short of the stall throughout the entire turn. If you're feeling real froggy, practice spinning and recovering. Do this over 15,000 feet when you're in a jet. To create a spin, get to the brink of a stall and just at the break of the stall, simultaneously kick in full rudder and pull all the way back on the stick and hold it until the thing really gets going. Then recover as I mentioned earlier. Just remember that the longer you hold the spin before recovering, the harder it is to recover. It is possible to create an irrecoverable spin. Real pilots practice slow flight and stalls several times as part of their certification and recertification processes. So should you. Learning the specific stall characteristics of an airplane is something that I personally do early on when I'm getting into a new airplane type. These exercises can teach you a lot about an airplane. That's all for this one. If there is any topic you want me to talk about, or if there is something from this video you want me to explain in greater detail, please let me know in the comments. I do check them regularly. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope what I said helps you out. Stay safe out there.